Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today I'd like to talk to you about another interesting topic. Uh, you know, we've been covering a lot of topics lately, but uh, but this one is probably a topic that maybe even some of the more veteran players might not know 100% correct. In fact, I'm going to admit myself that I don't know this topic 100% correct. Um, and this is uh, what charms to keep and what charms to throw away. Well, there are a lot of different charms in the game, and uh, and you can get some very interesting rolls on these charms. Um, but one thing we're going to talk about is max rolls. So uh, 3% run walk is the maximum amount of run walk you can have on a small charm. Um, it is 6% uh, run walk for large charms, and I believe it is... Um, what is it? Uh, 3, 3... 9% on a, on a grand charm, which is... Uh, which is kind of hard to come by, but I mean, most people don't really even bother with those uh, Grand Charms with Run Walk on them, unless they have something else really nice. Um, when it comes to individual resistances, so not all resistances, but individual resistances of uh, plus, you know, like plus poison or plus fire, uh, the maximum that you can get on a small charm is 11%. And um, there are some really nice charms that you can get your hands on uh, with uh, individual resistances. Um, when you are looking at... Um, maximum resistances for like a grand charm and things like that they definitely do spike up higher than that uh, i believe the maximum for a grand charm is something like 33 percent uh, which is a lot of resistance on one particular charm now individual stats are not really what people are looking for um, and this is uh, is really the the issue is it yes if you find a poison percent 11 or a, uh, a fire resist 10 um, they're very nice charms but they're going to be trumped by something like a 25 poison 9% fire or a 11 to life poison resist charm or a uh, magic find charm that has max damage on it, uh, things like that. In general, what you're going to find out is that the combination of effects tends to be more important than the charm itself. Um, there are hundreds of different combinations of charms and, um, and some of them are absolutely beautiful. For instance, um, I rerolled this charm myself right here, my uh, plus one summoning skills, 36 to life. Now, uh, grand charms are really sought after simply because they are, as you can see, capable of rolling a plus one to a tree. Now, that is not plus one to all skills. It is only plus one to that particular tree. So as you can see here, I have uh, a level 20 base on this ray skeleton, but I have a level 31 on the actual skill. And if I switch over to my other weapon set, which is my King Arm of King Leoric, I'm running level 37 skeletons and level 39 mastery, which is really, really sweet. And uh, quite a few of those plus to skills comes from these. But as you can see, a bland plus one summoning skills charm is nothing compared to that summoning skull skills with 36 to life because it gives me extra, um, you know, survivability. So when you find a, um, a particular skill or charm uh, that is useful, uh, and when I say useful, uh, I'm, I'm talking about things like, like this, which is a plus one curses. Uh, where did I put that? This plus one curses here is not as useful. Um, not a lot of necromancers are really worried about plus one curses. It doesn't help them out very much. Um, so a lot of people would re-roll this. Uh, and even though it has plus six strength on it, it's just not a good tree. Um, but if you find a plus one summoning skills or a uh, plus one like bow and crossbow or plus one javelin, uh, plus one cold fire, lightning, uh, sorceress, things like that, uh, specific trees are going to be very valuable. Like, for instance, um, assassins would obviously want plus one traps if they're a trap assassin. Or if they're martial arts, they'd love some martial arts plus the skills. But the shadow disciplines tree tends to be a little uh, less uh, important. Um, for barbarians, they love war cries and uh, combat skills. And honestly, the, um, the, the mastery's tree isn't terrible either because there's a lot that it does. But I think uh, it tends to be the less, less sought-after one in the barbarian. Um... You know, it, it's interesting, though, because I feel like the at, at least for the Barbarian, that particular tree would be great to have plus to skills in. I mean, you're getting resistances, you get defense, you get run walk speed, you increase stamina, and you get extra damage on your weapon. So it's like five different things with one charm. Um, but anyway, plus skiller charms is what they're called. People will refer to them as skiller charms. Skiller charms are very valuable, 
and uh, and you're going to want to hold on to them. And even when you get a charm like this, which is uh, plus one curses and six strength, you can re-roll it into something else, which I had planned on doing. Uh, we might as well do that on camera here. Uh, re-rolling a charm consists of taking the charm and um, putting it into your cube. I just found a uh, triangle's belt, by the way. I was pretty excited about that. The uh, it's a, it's a pretty rare find, Triangle's Belt. I don't know why it's so rare. I think it's because it's a a hell version of the the heavy belt. But I finally got myself a Triangle's Belt, so I'm excited about that. So you take the uh, the charm that you'd like to re-roll, and you put it into the cube with three gems. And I'm going to use Perfect Skulls because they are uh, easier to find and get rid of, and they're less useful as a general rule. Now, it is important to know that you can't just reroll any charm and get a skill or charm. And you can't reroll just any charm and get a plus one summoning skills with 36 to life. It has to be a high level charm with a high eye level. And the only way to guarantee that is to f basically either know for a fact that it's already a high eye level charm. For instance, if I had like one of these and it was plus one summoning skills with, uh, or plus one curses with 36 to life and I wanted to reroll it, I would know that it's already a high level charm. The other way to know it's a high-level charm is to find it directly off of Bale, Nilothak, or, Di or, or Diablo in Hell Difficulty. If you find a charm directly off of them, you will know that it's a high-level charm. And uh, and we're going to re-roll this a little bit. We're going to see what we get. So plus one curses to 12% faster hit recovery. So awful. And uh, we're going to go ahead and use three diamonds this time. Plus 50 defense, 20 to life. Not what we were looking for. Let's try 3P emeralds. Doesn't matter what gems you use, by the way. Plus 1 maximum damage and lightning. Let's use 3 sapphires. I actually have a whole bunch of gems stored on a mule, so I'm not really worried about this at all. And you'll see that it doesn't re-roll nicely. <laughs> Sometimes it re-rolls absolutely awful. And, uh, and you have to just keep re-rolling it um, basically forever. And, uh, and once you re-rolled it up, you, uh, you eventually will get something nice. Um, sometimes you just will dump all of your P-gems into it, and eventually it will just you'll just give up. But um, we know for a fact that this one was a Skiller Charm. And uh, there we go. We managed to get another Skiller Charm. So we got Shadow Disciplines, Assassin... Uh, with uh, 10 to life, which is a little bit more useful than a Curses Charm. It depends on how heavily a person is invested into their Shadow Discipline tree. Um, if they have, for instance, uh, Fade or a Burst of Speed and they're running Claw Block, um, if they're also running the uh, the Shadow Girl, the, uh, the little, little minion, and then maybe they're also using Mind Blast, I could see a Shadow Disciplines Charm being useful. So we'll hold on to that uh, for later. That was uh, that was a decent reroll. It could have been better. I could have gotten, you know, like a a Sorceress Charm or something of that nature. But, uh, but it was it's okay. Um, especially since I was doing this live on camera. <laughs> um, it turned out pretty nice. So let's take a look at some of my other characters, and I want to show you some of the other charms that they've held on to, um, specifically, um, you know, ones that they feel like are good charms. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hop over to my paladin, and we'll take a look and see what charms she's holding on to, um, or he's holding on to. Where is he at? I said she because I clicked on my Amazon. Now, my Paladin is a uh, very unique example because he is what's called a uh, Vengeance Paladin. And Vengeance Paladins do not get good damage from uh, plus ED or um, other things that, uh, that most other characters would get damage from. And um, he tends to, uh, to hold on to some odd charms, like for instance this plus 3 maximum damage with attack rating. Uh, when you look at his Vengeance damage, you'll see that he has uh, 2,944. If I take away this charm, you'll see that I lose almost, uh, what is that, like 38 damage. Like, just by removing 3 max damage. It's a, it's a fairly large amount, so I'm holding on to max damage charms on this character. Um, but the ones that are really nice are the ones that have max damage plus another effect, like the max damage plus cold damage, or... Um, this one here is, is interesting because it's a faster run-walk with lightning resistance. 
Uh, so it's a combination. Like I said, I, if I saw 15% lightning resistance large charm, I might not necessarily hold on to it unless I really needed that lightning resistance. But the lightning resistance combined with the faster run walk is very is a very attractive uh, proposition there. Um, this one right here, which is a Grand Chammy, is 8 to max damage with 40 to life, which is very interesting uh, as far as the charm is concerned. As you can see, it gives me attack rating. It gives me 40 to life, which is a rather large chunk of life. Um, I believe Grand Chams can, uh, can roll a little bit higher than 40 to life because a small charm can roll 20 to life. 20 is the cap on a small charm. So a, uh, a, a large charm can roll 40 and a grand charm should be able to roll 60. But um, uh, I'm super excited about that, uh, this charm, because it specifically adds a really large amount of damage to my character. As you can see, 2,850 is my damage without it. And when I put the charm back on, I'm at 2,944. Now this effect is very specific to the skill Vengeance. Vengeance gains a huge amount of damage for max and min, whereas a lot of other skills would rely on other damage effects. Um, for instance, if I take off all my max damage, you see I'm at 2,944. So let's just go ahead and take off each piece of my max damage charms. I've got, uh, I've got max damage charms all over the place. And you'll see now I've lost almost 500 damage from my top hand. Um, so those those charms that I have in my inventory that are specifically for that max damage are, are increasing my max damage by a rather large percentage. Um, now, <laughs> somebody said my that my paladin charms on uh, YouTube are giving them cancer. So let me arrange them all and make them look pretty, shall I? Shall I? I don't even need that lightning resistance. Um, <laughs> let's go take a look at my uh, uh, my Amazon's uh, charms real quick, and we'll get an idea of what uh, she's using as well. I mean, basically, what this comes down to is holding on to charms, and uh, and you hold on to charms that are that are useful. Um, it's also good to note that um, small charms can have magic find on them, and magic find caps out at seven percent on a small charm. So if you do happen to find a 7% um, small charm magic find, hold on to it because it's very sought after. Um, in fact, honestly, anything above like 2%, so like 3% magic find, 4% magic find, 5% magic find, 6% magic find, and 7% magic find are all sought after. And um, especially if they have another effect. So like if you found a 3% magic find with like 20 health, people would snatch that up. Um, it's it's very very sought after for trading. Um, these 100 damage poison damage small charms are very sought after as well. If you find uh, 100 poison damage small charms, especially if they have another effect, even if they're only 50 with another effect, they're still very sought after. Uh, this one here needs to go to my uh, my paladin. That one is uh, three max with uh, one to 19 lightning damage. Pretty nice for him. Let's see, I got another 50 poison damage small charm. I got lightning resist 11, lightning resist 11. Those are both really nice because they're capped lightning resistance. Um, this one I'm holding on to with lightning resist 6 just simply because it's uh, it's just extra lightning resistance. Um, eventually it'll get replaced with a 11% or an 11% with some other effect. Um, you can see I have another 100 poison damage small chammy and another 100 poison damage small chammy. They come in handy. Um, cold damage charms in particular, you notice how I, I, I usually have a cold damage charm on just about any melee or ranged character. And the reason for this is because cold damage applies a chilling effect. And chilling effects are absolutely amazing for specific characters. So for instance, if, uh, if you are any type of character that hits a target with your weapon, um, whether it be a ranged weapon or a melee weapon, having the charm on you will apply a cold effect with your attack which will chill the target and slow them down and uh, and having any kind of chilling effect is good now generally people will just use a one to two cold damage charm it doesn't matter but this one is a three to eight cold damage charm so it's a little bit better than your average cold damage charm um, I also have here a 175 poison damage large charm which is nice to have uh, these charms are eventually going to move their way over to my uh, my Amazon, uh, I'm, I'm planning on making a, uh, a poison damage Amazon. She's gonna be, she's gonna be kind of beast. Um, you can imagine if I have all these uh, 100 poison damage small chammies. I mean, your inventory is one, two, three, four spaces by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's essentially 40 slots. 
Uh, 40 times 100 is like <laughs> is, a, is a really large amount of poison damage. You're talking about what 4,000 poison damage? Um, just just in poison damage, nothing else. And you could you could maybe uh, get some poison damage from other sources as well. So it's uh, it's interesting. And then of course I have my javelin and spear Amazon skiller. And uh, I tend to hold on to a lot of uh, charms. Like for instance, um, I have some that are specifically uh, resistances. So I've got like my 6% fire resist here, uh, which has some poison damage on it as well. It'd be nice if it was higher. Um, but each individual charm and each individual um, like like grand chammy and large chammy are going to be um, judged differently. I mean, you're going to look at them and you're going to go, okay, uh, do I need fire resistance? Um, and if you don't specifically need fire resistance, then there's no reason for you to to bother. Um, if you do specifically need fire resistance, then then obviously you're going to uh, you're going to take some time and grab some of that fire resistance. Um, you can even transfer these charms in between characters, obviously, and uh, and really make it worth your while. Now, let's see, I've got. Uh, I'm trying to see if I had any other chammies in here I could throw in that hole. Chammy, chammy, chammies, chammy, chammies. 175 poison damage, chammy with three decks. Nice. Not right. in town. So that gives me uh, a total of how much poison damage? It's uh, 50, 150, 250. Um, 350, and then 425, 525, 575, 675 plus 75 plus 75 is 750, uh, 756, so about 756 poison damage on this uh, character right now. And uh, that's, a, that's a pretty decent amount. Um, there are a lot of different uh, charms that you will use on your characters, specifically for that character. Um, like I was saying earlier, if you have uh, resistance issues, you're going to pull out those things like the 11% lightnings um, or like the fire resistance charms, and you're going to put those on your specific characters. Um, you notice I have a rather poor fire resistance, so fire resistance has helped me out. Uh, my lightning resistance is actually kind of low when you take uh, into account that I'm running an 11%, an 11%, and uh, I think I have another lightning resist, uh, 6%. So without my lightning resist chammies, you see I'm only at 41% lightning, so those, those lightning resist chammies are helping me out a ton. Now, each character is different, though, and I'm going to show you a character that is using charms specifically to increase her damage. So I have a character. Her name is uh, TNT. Uh, GGM TNT. She's right here. She's level 19. And uh, GGM TNT is using an interesting ability. It's called Exploding Arrow. Exploding Arrow has a very interesting effect, and the effect of Exploding Arrow is that it applies any and all fire damage that you have on your character to the explosion of the arrow itself. And uh, when you know it, it seems like I've crashed. <laughs> so this character specifically is using uh, fire damage chimneys and uh, her fire damage chimneys have no other purpose other than to beef up her fire damage. Um, she has a lot of fire damage chimneys, uh, more than probably uh, most characters will ever have and the entire purpose of these chamois as I was talking about is to add fire damage to her explosive arrow um, the other interesting thing is she doesn't even actually have explosive arrow uh, because she is using a bow that is specifically pulling out the um, explosive arrow as you can see fires explosive arrows or bolts so she's not actually firing explosive arrows and um she can take these uh, fire chamois and add the fire damage to her explosive arrow and gain massive damage in the process. As you can see, I can pretty much one-shot just about anything in here, um, if not two-shot. And the reason why is because the explosion is an AoE effect. So the fire damage is being applied in an AoE pattern 
around the target. And uh, and as I build this character up, her fire damage will increase exponentially because of those chamois, because I will uh, slowly get rid of the chamois that are only like one to two fire damage, and we'll start stacking up more and more of the ones that are like five to 13. And, uh, and the ones that have resistances on them, like fire resist, uh, lightning resist, and fire damage, and things like that. Um, and as you can see, they can get fairly high. So uh, we're looking at, uh, there's a 15 to 25 here. That's a level 56 fire chammy. Um, 7 to 17 with poison damage. Uh, we also have, you know, uh, various smaller fire damage charms here, which, I, like I said, will eventually be, be replaced. Um, the modifiers are fairly common, so as you can see, these are smoking charms. So a smoking charm of incineration, that means it rolled two separate fire effects. So like, see how this says smoldering charm? This is a smoking charm, which is one fire damage effect, of incineration, which is a second fire effect. So this is actually a double fire full roll. Um, this one here rolled, um, you know, <laughs> incineration as well. But, uh, but it only rolled on a Grand Chammy, and I'll still use it anyway, just simply because it's, uh, it's extra fire damage. And the more fire damage I have on this attack, the more fire damage will be added to that explosion. And that's just another interesting uh, thing that you can keep charms for. So as you find really high damage uh, elemental charms, uh, you can hold on to those for your melee and your range characters to give them an ability to take out targets which are physically immune. Uh, physical immunes are uh, definitely a plague in Hell difficulty, and so when you come across a physical immune, it definitely helps to have a couple really high damage, elemental damage charms, uh, whether it be poison, lightning, fire, or cold. Now, cold tends to be the lowest of all of the chamois uh, as far as elemental damage is concerned, but like I was talking about earlier, it's always nice to have at least one cold damage chammy, uh, specifically because if you don't, um, you're not going to get that chilling effect. Um, as you can see, I don't have the chilling effect right now on this character because I don't have any cold damage chammy on her. And uh, and that's, uh, that's definitely something. So, I mean, right now I'm only level 19 and I'm in a, uh, what, Players 5 game. And as you can see, I'm pretty much just rolling through everything with this fire damage. Um, just, just massive amounts of fire damage. And I literally saved these charms specifically for her. As I was leveling up, I just put aside every fire damage charm I could come across, uh, specifically so that later on, you know, when I rolled this character, I would have an extremely easy time, um, you know, with my little my little TNT Amazon. Now there are some other uh, chamois which we'll talk about. Uh, all resistance chamois are very interesting. So let me go ahead and grab my necromancer again. Now the interesting thing about um, the uh, small charms is that they can roll all resistances. So if you specifically are looking for resistances on charms, um, you can get an all resistance five charm, small charm, and an all resistance 15 grand charm, as well as an all resistance uh, 10 large charm. Um, they are rather difficult to come by, and if you happen to find an all resistance five small charm, they are really valuable. Um, especially if you find them with another effect. Like, for instance, let's say you found an all resistance 5 small chammy uh, with like faster run walk on it or something like that. Uh, you would definitely want to hold on to those. Uh, like I said, pretty much any magic find charm above 2%, so 3% and higher, are uh, good to hold on to uh, if they're small charms. If you find like a 1% grand charm, nobody's going to want it, but um, it's uh, it really depends. The. Um, even just a small 3% charm is good to hold on to, and people will uh, will trade you something for it. Uh, 4%, um, it's, it's just they're really, really nice. You can also re-roll these, by the way. So if you have one that you think might re-roll into a very nice charm, um, you can re-roll it and try and see if you can get something. Um, it re-rolls the same way we did earlier, which is the way we, um, we re-rolled with the, the P-Gems. So uh, you take your P-Gems and you put them into the cube with the small chammy and you re-roll them. And uh, it's a little bit uh, difficult to say exactly what you're going to get because there are so many different variables. Um, some of the more interesting uh, small chammies that you can get are uh, life and mana on the same charm. So if you happen to find one that has... Like, for instance, uh, plus 20 to life, and it also has mana on it. So, like, plus 20 life, 10 mana. Those are actually really, really useful charms. And um, and you probably are going to want to hold on to those. I need to transfer this one over to my, uh, my paladin.
and um, it's 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 really about is it useful or not? Um, is it useful to you? Is it useful to someone else? Um, is it near the maximum roll? I think uh, what a lot of people look for when they look for small chamois or grand chamois or large chamois is what they're looking for is, is it near the maximum roll? Because eventually everyone has an inventory full of charms and it's not necessarily, you know, do I need charms? It's do they have the specific charms that are going to make my character better? Um... You know, like if I were already capped out on lightning resistance, I wouldn't necessarily need lightning resistance charms, right? So, uh, so here's a lightning resistance charm with 15%, and notice that when I pick it up and take it off, I'm still at 81% lightning resistance in uh, in hell difficulty. So I don't need this charm. I could take this charm off and give it to somebody else, let them use it. Um, and that's the that's the beauty of the charms is that you can fill in the gaps where you need them. I obviously need fire resistance and poison resistance, not lightning. And do I have any other lightning resistance? I have a 7%. It still hasn't gone down. Um, I have a fire resistance 9. I definitely need that. Um, I do have a cold damage charm on this character, so that's nice. And as you can see, I've already eliminated some charms, which I can give to another character who might actually need those resistances. Um, when it comes to resistances, though, you'll find that uh, poison resistance is probably the least sought after, and uh, fire, cold, and lightning are more sought after in general, uh, just simply because they're they're more deadly. Uh, poison doesn't kill you right away, not unless you're fighting something like Lilith, um, and then it, then it does uh, become quite an issue. Um, uh, so, to make sure I went over all the charms that you can hold on to. So, all resistance charms, um, individual 11% charms, those are amazing. Um, anything that has two effects on them tend to be very nice. Like, for instance, the one I'm hovering over right now, which is max damage and magic find. Um, or if this had, like, say, life and magic find, this one in particular that has damage and lightning damage. Um, this one has life and cold damage, so that could be my cold damage chammy, which means why am I holding on to this 611? Uh, when I have a nice little small cold damage chammy of 1 to 3 and 10 to life. That's a perfect example of an amazing cold damage chammy, which you're going to want to hold on to for, uh, for your characters. I'm trying to OCD my inventory here. Gonna make it all look very pretty. <laughs> um, this one right here is not bad with uh, 77 to attack rating and 21 to life. So, you know, it has two effects on it. If you need attack rating, uh, you know, it can be very helpful. And you'll see that uh, 6,844, it goes down by way more than just 77. I lose almost 400 off of my attack rating just for that 77. So when you think about attack rating on charms, don't think about it as a tiny amount. Think about it as a huge amount. Because what it is is my vengeance is already giving me a 250% bonus to my attack rating. And I may have other items on which are also giving me a bonus to attack rating. Like, for instance, the uh, Baron Air Star has a 200% bonus to attack rating on it. Uh, which means that when I'm using vengeance on another character or another weapon, you'll see that my vengeance attack rating goes way down. Um, so the... 250% on the skill plus the 200% on the Baron Arrow Star um, enhances that uh, 77 attack rating that I'm adding by over 450%. So the 77, you know, <laughs> multiplies out very nicely. And then, you know, I wouldn't normally use a 77 attack rating charm, but the fact that it had 21 to life on it also uh, was very, very enticing. And, uh, and so I was like, okay, why not? And this particular character is a Conviction Paladin, so you'll see that I have a lot of, like, uh, lightning damage, cold damage, like, fire damage charms as well on here. Uh, like, 1 to 22 lightning, uh, I got the, uh, the 1 to 10 lightning, I've got the 1 to 19 lightning. And the reason is, is because all that lightning damage and stuff is getting multiplied by my Conviction, which is reducing the resistance of all nearby monsters by, uh, by 145%. It should be 150%. I seem to be missing one of my uh, skillers, but that's okay. The um, the beauty of it is though is that I'm uh, I'm having a lot of fun with this character. He he can uh, he can pretty much kill anything, and uh, I'm gonna give him some more attack rating. Why not? Uh, he's got another lightning uh another lightning resist chammy, which he doesn't need. He's got 
got all these lightning resist jammies. I can give these to somebody else and uh, they can be useful over there. Um, so we talked about uh, all resist. We talked about individual. We talked about life jammies. Uh, 20 to life jammies are pretty valuable, especially if they have other effects on them. Um, things like faster hit recovery can be very, very valuable. I'm not sure if I have an FHR uh, charm just laying around. But uh, if you look at the blade buckle, you see it has 30% FHR. Um, grand chamois can cap out at 12%. Uh, large chamois, I believe, are 10 or no, 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 it's like 8% or something like that. And uh, small chamois are like 3% FHR, I think, or 4%. I, I can't remember exactly. Um, but, the, but by themselves, they're not amazing. But if you find, like, for instance, a uh, an FHR chammy uh, that has some very, very nice uh, effects, like, for instance, let's say you find a, f a faster hit recovery chammy that has 20 to life on it. Absolutely worth keeping. Um, if, or you find a, uh, a faster hit recovery charm that has, you know, magic find on it or all resistances. Absolutely worth keeping. Um, you know, if you find, for instance, a uh, an all resistance charm with faster hit recovery or a... Um, a <laughs> or a faster run walk charm with a really nice effect on it. As we talked about earlier, I had that one uh, faster run walk charm, which was 15% um, lightning resistance. Uh, that's just a really sweet charm. I mean, that's 15% to one resistance, and you get 5% faster run walk, and that's absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, it's it's something that you're going to hold on to and drop to some other characters. Um, you know, it, it, it these charms in particular, they're going to roll weird. Like, you're never going to find, like, the absolute god-tier perfect charm, but, and this is a big but, um, you will find charms that are definitely worth holding on to. And then what happens is, is when you fill your inventory with charms, when you finally filled up your entire inventory, you're going to uh, slowly replace those charms with better ones as you find them. And, um, and you're going to pass off some of the lower-level charms to, um, you know, your your lower level characters. Um, like for instance, um, I have some charms here which are high level charms, see level 44, level 44, level 37, um, but this one to three cold damage at 10 life is level 20. I might eventually find a better cold damage chammy for this particular character and pass this off to a low level, lower level character. Um, we also have uh, level 21, level 21. A lot of these can be used on some rather low level characters. The 1 to 10 Lightning is level 15. Uh, this one right here, the Sharp Grand Charm of Vita, is level 69, so definitely not a low-level charm. Uh, what a terrible belt. It's absolutely awful. Hello. Bink. So basically, in a nutshell, <laughs> wrapped up in a, in a, in a puzzle is... Are these charms any good? And uh, and to, to answer that question is you have to judge them based on what they could roll max. So if we go over it one last time, I know I've been prattling on for 30 minutes, so let me just go on it one more time. All right, so 11% is your highest resistance on a small charm. Five to all resistance is your maximum on a small charm. 7% magic find is your maximum on a small charm. 20 to life is your maximum on a small charm. Um, I believe 20 to mana is also the maximum for a small charm. 3% um, run walk is maximum on a small charm. And um, I believe it's 5% hit recovery is maximum on a small charm. Um, and, and these are effects that people uh, do seek. And if you look specifically for those effects, you will find some really nice ones. Um, 40 to all life, or 40 to life is maximum on a grand charm, as far as I remember. So if you find a really nice grand charm uh, with a plus to skills on it, and it happens to have 40 to life, it's actually really uh, worth keeping. Um, this one right here that rolled uh, one disciplines and 10 life wasn't super amazing, but it's uh, but it's all right. And um, look for those combos. Look for those ones that really, really stack up the uh, the the resistances and the life and the damage and uh, and things together. Um, think about things like uh, you know when you find a nice life chammy with 
cold damage on it, that that's a perfect cold damage addition to your character, so your character could have some chilling effect. Um, think about the fact that uh, each one of the resistance charms, while they are nice individually, um, are so much better when they have something else on them, like faster run walk, or faster hit recovery, or life. Um, you know, things like that, which are really going to help your character to grow. Um, things like these 7% lightning, or maybe like a 5% lightning with extra damage, they may not be the best in the world, but they can definitely be placeholders until you find something better. And um, as always, you're always welcome to ask. You know, if you find a particular charm, you want to come into chat and be like, hey, I found a uh, plus 5% run, run walk, uh, plus 3 max damage charm. Is this any good? And I'll be like, hell yeah, I'll take that charm. You know, something like that. It, it's it's uh, it's it's on a case-by-case uh, -case basis with charms, so you really have to kind of judge them on your own. If you want to, you know, ask your friends, though. You know, say, hey, is this charm any good? And see what they say. And, uh, you know, if, if they don't like it, you can always ask somebody else. Uh, because I guarantee you that when it comes to charms, um, there is always a charm that someone will view as absolute garbage and another character will view as absolutely amazing. Uh, like this plus 3 max damage, 14 attack rating, 1 to 2 cold damage charm. That's a great uh, cold damage charm that adds extra damage to your attack. Um, I, my character in particular, this character, is building max damage. So he's using all these max damage charms to beef up his damage. Whereas other characters will not. You know, a sorceress isn't going to use max damage charms. An elemental druid isn't going to use max damage charms. A necromancer is not going to use max damage charms. But I will, because this is my particular character's way of building. Um, you know, and some some particular characters might have very low lightning resistance and might seek out those lightning resistance charms. Some characters might have extremely low cold or fire, and they're going to seek out those cold and fire resistance charms. And if you happen to find a like a fire resistance eleven with uh, you know with with like twenty to life on it, you've got yourself something to really hold on to, because those are extremely rare. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos and. Uh, Keep watching.